So uh, before we then uh, come to the next session, um, we will now hear briefly from Ian uh, Bremer, uh, president and founder of the uh, Eurasia Group. Um, Ian actually wanted to be here, but some of you may know tomorrow is Thanksgiving in the United States, uh, which is why this year we sort of have a dramatic drop in the uh, usual um, uh, uh, participation from uh, across the Atlantic. However, he did uh, promise uh, to give us um, um, to deliver a brief a video message, which we uh, can now listen to, because I think it'll actually uh, kick us off quite well, if we can... Um Greetings to all of you at the SPAS conference. It's certainly a very interesting geopolitical time to be hosting it. Um, as you may know, I think we've just entered a pretty profound geopolitical recession, an unwind uh, of the old US-led global order. Uh, a weakening of the transatlantic relationship, um, a strengthening of uh, governments, frankly, that are less interested in supporting um, Americanization and its allies uh, that we've seen over the past decades, whether it's Russia's Putin or Turkey's Erdogan, or perhaps most importantly, China's Xi Jinping. Um, I think there are a lot of reasons for that. Uh, some of it uh, is the uh, just natural um, realities of globalization and economics being driven by where the people are. Um, but um, a big piece of it is also uh, the undermining of liberal democratic models by lots of citizens living in the United States and in Europe that increasingly feel that the governments and their policies are not helping them. Uh, we obviously saw that with the election process in my own country a year ago. We saw it across Europe um, with Brexit, with the German elections, the Austrians, the Czechs, even the French, uh, where you saw the far left and far right um, exceeding uh, their previous tallies and a lot of people spoiling their ballots. This is all structural. It's a lot more inequality that we're seeing in the world, um, and it's happening at the same time that perhaps the strongest leader, Xi Jinping, is consolidating power and he's using technology to facilitate that. Um, going forward, I think the big options for the global order would be either um, a regionalization, a more fragmented global order with different uh, governments that are much more important in their own backyards, but competing um, where those regional orders overlap and also um, not easily coordinating uh, when there are global challenges that need to be resolved, whether it's things like the environment or terrorism or, or inequality. I think that's one potential model. A second um, is that central governments don't actually get it done. They increasingly become weaker over time and it turns out that it's where the money is it's where the intellectual capital is that ends up becoming more important. That's multinational corporations, and it's also uh, decentralized. It's the mayors of cities that are doing really well, have the flexibility to put new governance in place and that can attract um, the world's best and brightest. That, of course, implies that structural inequality is gonna grow, we're not gonna respond to it very effectively, and I think that's probably right. Another model is one um, where technology actually starts driving uh, much more um, inequality and makes authoritarian governments much stronger. Keep in mind when the information revolution uh, started, the communications revolution, it was all about empowering individuals. But now that we're into the data revolution, it's much more top-down and hierarchical, empowers corporations and empowers governments, or at least those that know how to leverage and harness that information. Going forward, I worry that the present technological trends um, undermine the relationship between labor and capital and therefore will create more inequality in the developed world. Um, also, um, that with social media and the way information is becoming a consumer good provided for people to ensure what they like, um, that we get more political polarization as a consequence. And the final question is who ends up uh, developing artificial intelligence in a strong way first? And right now, there are two groups that are really ahead of the curve. One's the Chinese 
The second are Silicon Valley. Now, of course, the Chinese were talking primarily about the government, so that's not likely to move uh, in the United States. On the other hand, corporations in Silicon Valley aren't necessarily patriotic, and they're also much more flexible in their geography. Let's see where Jeff Bezos decides to announce his second um, headquarters, whether it's really the United States or not. In any case, uh, watching what happens in those developments, I think, will be one of the most important geopolitical trends of the coming 10 to 20 years and one that we should spend time in the future talking about. Uh, I wish you well. I hope the conference goes well, and I look forward to talking to some of you in the future. So let's give them a round of applause. Geopolitical recession. Um, so very interesting uh, words from Ian Bremmer uh, this morning.